Hello there, welcome to the blank garden space. It is time to get serious about planning this garden. I need to order some raised beds and figure out my garden plan for real. And so I wanted to just chat with you about kind of the situation that I'm in and give you my tips for planning from a totally <laughs> empty space because I think some of us find ourselves in this position where there's absolutely nothing laid out yet. We literally could do anything um, in the garden space and that can be almost a challenge too when there's just open area. What do you do? So I spoke in a couple videos back about how I was just sort of watching Yay! the sun. You can probably hear my daughter. She's playing in the background. But I was just watching the sunlight and what the sun does throughout the day so I could get a little bit of a feel for where I would you know, want to be growing within this garden space because you can see that there's a line um, from the house here that does cast a bit of shade on part of this area. So I took some time and really thought about um, just where the sun was, kind of checked multiple times a day, just made sure I had a little bit of a handle on it. Um, you also might want to look at uh, sort of drainage and stuff. We've had a lot of rain and as you can see there's <laughs> quite a lot of water um, cooling on this area. Now I'm not going to be doing raised beds into the ground because we're actually renting um, this garden. So I don't own this soil. I'm not going to like take up this concrete. I might have to worry more about drainage if that was the case. But I'm going to be doing fully contained raised beds and containers. So the fact that the little bit of water pools isn't really going to impact me too much. Of course, it will mean that there may be watering, pooling like in my walkways of my garden. So it's just something that, you know, you want to think about getting the lay of the land. And then obviously, if your area is not flat, that's going to be another consideration. I do have a very flat open garden space. So I don't really have to worry about like any kind of gradient or building up any area. Um, but that might be something that you would want to consider too. Like, my other garden was on a hill, just a slight hill, but it still meant that I had to slightly terrace my raised beds when I put them in because um, you do want the surface of your raised beds or containers even to be as flat as possible because whenever you water it, whenever it rains, even with a watering can when you water it, any kind of gradient, you're going to find that... Um, you know, the, the seeds, sometimes the soil and everything will start sort of washing away down that. So that's something to really be mindful of too. And then I also started to think about, so this space as far as the layout of the bed. So I, again, in the last video I talked about um, that I think I'm going to do four raised beds. I think they're going to be two by four raised beds, although I may do a couple six by two raised beds just to have a little bit more space. Typically, you know, you're not going to regret having a little bit more room, um, but I do like the small garden and I think there is something that's really uh, key about um, keeping your garden manageable and not like getting too many um, raised beds, too much space. You can always, you know, well, depending on your space size, you can add more. Um, and so you can always start small and then kind of build up from there. So I may even go ahead and get a couple raised beds and then add a couple more. Probably going to limit it to four raised beds just because I started to look at the size of this. So you need to measure your space. You need to look at the size of the raised beds that are available to you. And then you're gonna, next is gonna be the layout, but figure out how much garden space and just start with what's manageable and build from there. As you get your garden systems in place, as you get used to, you know, what you're doing, it's, it's gonna get easier to add more, but I'm going to start with four two by four raised beds, possibly that two by six raised bed. But I know that that's a really manageable 10 minute a day garden. You can really grow a lot, um, but also get it done in a reasonable amount of time. So now that we've got like that plan, let's talk a little bit about the garden layout because there's kind of infinite possibilities on how you lay this out as far as the locations um, of, <laughs> of, where you put the beds. And that just depends now a little bit on your own personal aesthetic. So how do you want this garden to look? And then um, think about practicality. Like how are you actually gonna wanna come out and harvest? So I went through a few different iterations in my mind of how I wanted to guard the garden to lay out, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture in here of 
what the, of the layout that I ended up on. And you'll see that it's pretty similar to the garden layout that I had in my previous garden where I had two raised beds with an arch and then two other raised beds to the side. Originally with this garden, I was thinking I would do a U-shape, fully utilizing this space. But as I've spent more time out in this garden area and I've looked at the sunlight, I've realized that this half of the garden is really where most of the sunlight hits and kind of along the fence there, but this half is really shaded by the house. So I could, I will probably put containers of like greens and more shade loving things in this side, but I wanna maximize the full sun because I am gonna be growing a lot of those like big summer annual vegetables. That's what I wanna grow in this garden. And so I need to maximize the most sunlight I possibly can in order to give those plants the best chance of growing. If you just want to grow like leafy kind of greens, a shade garden is totally great. If you want to do coleus and begonias and have that real soft, beautiful shade, you know, garden, it's kind of just what space you have, what sunlight you have, and what you want to grow. But I want to grow tomatoes, I want to grow peppers, I want to grow eggplants, and they're going to need, they're going to do best, I should say, because I have grown them in some part shade, but they're going to do best, they're going to produce best in the most possible sun that um, that I have. So that, that is gonna change. My original U-shape design, it's just not gonna maximize that sun. So even though I do have this garden shed here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of raised beds in front of it because I just want as much sunlight as I can possibly get. And I'm gonna utilize my longer beds along this longer side that I have behind me. Again, sort of following the sun. But it's also, it's interesting, it's basically like, the exact same, just with the beds on a different side, the exact same garden layout pretty much that I had in my previous garden, which is kind of funny. Um, but it's also something that I know, that kind of L-shaped garden is really easy to get in and around. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to have access to your raised beds. You'll often see in garden designs, like lots of space around your raised beds, around people's raised beds, and growing in a small space, that's just not always possible. Um, sometimes, like my, my last garden, I had like a foot between two of my raised beds, but it is, it does make it trickier. I will say, I have learned that if you can give yourself, like if you can lay out your raised beds in a way so that you have a space to walk around them, it's gonna be so much easier for harvesting and taking care of the plants, weeding, all of that. Also, if you're like me and you like to cram your beds full of things, have lots of flowers in there, have things spilling out, out of the raised beds, if you have more room between the base beds, there's just kind of like that much more room for the plants to grow. Your, let's say, you have a vining plant. That vining plant can trail out of the garden bed and then utilize the sunlight and everything. And even though it's not technically still in the garden bed, you're like, you're adding that much more growing space if you allow some space in your walkway. So that was another with the L-shaped garden. Another thought that I had is that the plants can can spill out over here and they can keep spilling into the sunlight. And even though I won't have a raised bed, maybe on this part of the soil, the garden, the plants will spill out into the space, use the sun, and I'm just adding like that much more growing space. And then I am gonna plan to have a lot of containers in and around, kind of like some containers as a focal point in the middle of the L. Um, and as many containers that I can kind of move around to if I find that they're getting in the way of the things that are growing in the raised beds. The nice thing about containers like that is that you can move them. So like if, if I put a container over here in this kind of like shaded area by the house and I find meh, it's not doing so well. It probably needs a little more sun. I can always move it. And so that's really nice. And I'll just probably add as many containers as I can without reason. I had so many containers in my last garden. When I tell you like I had a lot of containers, I had a lot of containers, so many containers. And while I, I love that and I would 100% do that again, because we are renting and we're only here for a year, this is like a temp very temporary garden. And so I just don't want to put so many things in here that I have to take down. And, you know, I just want to try. And I'm saying this now, and my garden channel is titled The Reckless Garden, so we'll see what happens. But I am going to try 
to contain myself a little bit and maybe do a few less containers and try to really maximize that like raised bed growing space. So that's my thought um, for right now. So here in like, I'll put another picture in. In my mind's eye, this is sort of the vision that I have for this garden. And I just use a pen and paper to write out these like garden, like sketch out these garden pictures. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to use any kind of software system or anything. As long as you know, like you can tell which thing is a raised bed and whatever, you're good. Um, so just to have a little bit of an idea. And typically I will go in and actually like put out like where I kind of want plants and stuff. But this year, I'm honestly just kind of winging it. I feel like the garden is still so up in the air that I'm about to go start a bunch of seeds. And I'm like, I have a basic idea. I know I want tomatoes on the arch trellis. I know I want to have lots of peppers and eggplants. And then I'm just kind of like, I'm just going to kind of wing it as far as planting everything. And hopefully I have enough room and I'll use containers if I have spillover plants. So I'm not doing the typical um, like planting plan. But that can be really helpful too. If you have specific ideas of what you wanna grow, you can actually like put those plants, of course, into your garden plan. Um, and even if it's just a guideline, like honestly, a lot of times I wouldn't end up doing exactly what I planned, but I'd have like that guideline in my mind of, of what I was trying to do. But to be honest, this year is so different. And I think if you're doing like a renting garden like this, um, you know, going with the flow is totally fine. So I did want to talk really quick about strategizing for a renting garden. So obviously, you know, if this was my own home that I owned, I could, I would think about maybe like planting into the ground or digging things up. And you could certainly talk to, you know, a landlord about putting in a garden. I think that's a great option. What I am choosing to do is just to use all completely contained, like even my raised beds will be completely contained so that I'm not damaging anything. Um, and I'm not creating any kind of a mess. It will be easy to literally pick up this whole garden. And when we move, leave the space exactly as I found it. Um, and there are a lot of really good, like fully contained garden options. <laughs> I actually, at this point, have not yet decided which contained raised bed I'm going to use. There are elevated ones, which are literally like up off of the ground. There are like stock tank options. There are some contained elevated, like self-watering beds um, that a few different companies do. And I just, I haven't nailed down exactly what raised bed I'm going to use, but I'm going to use a fully contained raised bed so that I'm not damaging the surface of the concrete. Um, and that is just basically my plan for making this garden really renting friendly. I will have to do more with fertilizing and care like that. And I will take you along with that journey. But I just wanted to make that statement like that's how I'm handling the renting issue is just using all contained raised beds. It's a fully container garden, which is totally doable. There are some great gardeners doing some contained, fully contained um, gardens like Chicago Gardener. She has like the most beautiful fully container raised beds, everything contained garden on a rooftop. And like, that's totally such an inspiration for me because um, yeah, you can do it even with a blank slate like this. Of course, if you're able to go down to the ground, um, if you're starting from scratch or you aren't renting or your landlord's okay with it, um, I would say that doing raised beds that go down to the ground will make it a little bit easier for your growing. So <laughs> I hope you can't, I hope my daughter's not being too loud. She's out playing. We are just loving the fact that it's like 70 degrees right now in the middle of January. It's so wild to me. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start some seeds, um, but I will talk to you again soon. Stay tuned, hopefully I'll make a decision and order my raised beds pretty soon and I'll share with you what I end up getting. As always, thank you, talk to you then.